Hi everyone, just wanted to talk about this story that's been in the news in the last couple of days. Um, just going to read this from the BBC and just give you uh, my opinions on it. Um, it can only be good news is the summary I suppose, but uh, let's dig a little bit deeper. Um, it says that gambling levy could raise £100 million for NHS treatment. Um, a levy on gambling companies that would be in £100 million a year to fund NHS treatment is being considered by the UK government. So it's being considered and invariably there will be lobbyists um, and they will probably end up watering this down uh, in some way, shape or form, but we shall of course see. Um, the article goes on. It wants all operators to pay their fair share instead of the current voluntary scheme. Now at the moment, um, bookies do, uh, bookies, online casinos, gambling establishments, generally all pay in to this voluntary um you know donations uh you know these voluntary schemes to you know support gambling charities um but it's not actually written into law it's not an obligation um it's something they do you know it's like I said, voluntarily but you, you can read into that what you like but um dare we say that an element of positive pr and being seen to do the right thing may actually play quite a substantial part in that um, the money will be invested in treatment and support for people harmed by gambling in England, Scotland and Wales, ministers say. The body that represents the industry said it supported the new levy. Well, of course they would. If they were approached for comment, they're not going to turn around and uh, deny donations to help the very people that they are indeed harming. Um, I think, that, again, that would be a, a terribly negative PR step as far as the uh, gambling companies are concerned and particularly at a time where they are coming under greater and greater scrutiny what with the um, limitations on advertising during sporting events um, obviously all the talk around shirt sponsors and that sort of thing um, I think maintaining whatever positive elements of their public image they can it will be incredibly important to them and will certainly affect the bottom line going forward but the betting and gambling council also said the funds from the levy must only be given to genuine charities and organisations for tackling problem gambling and related harms. Now, um, yeah, in principle, totally agree with that. Uh, charity is one of those quite shady sectors, really, where uh, it's highly profitable for a number of organisations who may or may not pass on, you know, X, Y, Z amount of the donations they receive to actually helping the people that they purport to care about. So, yes, on the surface of that, I believe it, but when they say must only go to genuine i read must only go to certain charities and when they can be picking and choosing who they're you know basically using this levy to support if the gambling companies have their way then it wouldn't surprise me that there's some sort of you know coercion there between them and the so-called charities but again that's the very skeptical cynical part of me coming out and maybe this will turn out to be a good thing under the government plan, online operators would pay 1% of what they make. Uh, now, maybe that's just terrible wording by the BBC journalist here, um, but that doesn't really mean an awful lot. 1% of what they make would, to me, uh, imply you know, profit, gross profit, probably, um, but that could be like net, net, net profit after all the directors have been paid after everything, in which case it could boil down to not an awful lot. Um, or it could be 1% of revenue. Now, that would obviously be a substantially higher figure so we'd need clarification as to what that 1% actually meant. Betting shops and casinos would pay about 0.4% of what they make. Um, so yeah, obviously less than the online casinos, which I guess would allow for greater overheads. Doesn't seem like a huge amount, but again, you know, what they make is such a loose term. You know, that could be nothing. It could be a reasonably substantial amount of money if you think about how much these businesses turn over. Is it enough? Well, obviously that's down to subjective opinion. The industry of a statutory level on operators was published in a white paper on gambling reforms earlier this year. I spoke about that, I think, in a previous video. Uh, Culture Secretary Lucy Fraser said, The introduction of this levy will strengthen the safety net and help to deliver our long-term plan to help build stronger communities while allowing millions of people to continue to gamble safely. Basically, what that statement's saying in a very sort of airy-fairy, PR-y, spin-doctor kind of way is we don't want to limit people's ability to gamble because it's going to cost us an absolute fortune in tax, um, allowing millions of people to continue to gamble safely. So basically it means they don't want to be putting any restrictions on the availability of gambling. Although that being said, in the Gambling Commission's defence to some extent, there have been limitations put onto people through affordability checks for online casinos and other adjustments to the way people are able to gamble that are specifically designed 
albeit maybe sometimes cat candidly, to help those people who are suffering from addiction. So I'm not just here to slate the government, slate the Gambling Commission and say that it's all just hollow and empty and, you know, virtue signalling, although it would be remiss to say there is an element of that. Um, but it might be that some of this is actually coming from a good place and could actually do some good. Obviously, it'll be a uh, wait and see, won't it? Ask patients about gambling health, guidance said. Gambling addicts, parents about... Oh, hang on. I'm reading links to other stories here. Oh, maybe I'll have a read of those and uh, come back to you. A consultation on the plans will gather views from industry doctors... From, sorry, from industry doctors and academics, as well as those with experience of harmful gambling and the general public. It will last for eight weeks. Now, I'll be interested to see what sort of proportion of the people that they consult with will be doctors. Which proportion of people they you know report with um will be academics and how many of you know the general public and gambling addicts they'll speak to in contrast to the amount of industry people that will allow to be allowed to have an input onto this there's been a sharp rise in people gambling online on their smartphones in recent years yeah that was inevitable though um this will mean they can gamble any time of the day or anywhere increasing the likelihood of addiction experts say well yes i don't think any of us need to be told about that do we in the summer, NHS England announced special specialist gambling addiction clinics that would open this year. In um, Now, I wouldn't normally read this list, but actually, if you are in one of these places, or near one of these places, and this could be useful, it uh, might be worth a, a Google search if you are suffering from a gambling addiction. So, Milton Keynes, Thurrock and Essex, Derby, Bristol, Liverpool, Blackpool, Sheffield, and they already exist in London, Leeds, Newcastle, Manchester, Southampton, Stoke-on-Trent, and Telford. Um, so, yeah, might be worth Googling NHS gambling addiction clinic uh, if you live near one of those places if you are looking to have some additional form of support for your, your recovery. Uh, there is also a national clinic treating gambling and gaming addiction in children and young people in London. I didn't know about that. I'll actually do some reading on that because that sounds like a very, very good thing. Um, anyone who watches the channel knows I have a um, particular affinity uh, with young people and they're the people I believe could really use um, as much help, support and advice when it comes to you know, avoiding gambling. Um, certainly avoiding gambling addiction, but also in sort of recovering before they do too much damage to their futures. Health Minister Neil O'Brien said harmful gambling can affect people's savings, ruin relationships and devastate people's lives and health. Yeah, we know all of that, don't we? Gambling companies should pay their fair share towards the cost of treatment services, but we want to hear from as many people as possible about how new statutory levy should work. Um, I think that I say my biggest thing is at the moment is the arbitrary percentages they're putting on things. What do they actually mean, uh, and where's the money going to go, and how is that money then going to be spent to support people? NHS Mental Health Director Claire Murdoch said it was only right that this billion-pound industry steps up and supports people suffering from gambling addiction. The Betting Gambling Council said its members already pledged £100 million over four years to fund research, education and treatment services through the voluntary levy scheme. And it'd be interesting to see how that would actually compare in real monetary terms, you know, should this compulsory levy be in introduced? Because I can only assume that once a compulsory level levy is introduced, then they are still, uh, as operators, allowed to say that they promote responsible gambling without the need for an additional voluntary levy on top. Now, that's not to say that none of them will contribute more than the minimum required amount, but I can't imagine a huge amount of them doing much more than is required by law or much more than they need to do to maintain their responsible gambling message. The new levy should apply to all operators, including the National Lottery, on a sliding scale to protect high street betting shops that struggled, struggled during the pandemic, it added. I don't know whether we should be protecting those sorts of shops. It doesn't seem like any, many of them are struggling, although we have lost a few you know, locally to me, so... I won't shed too many tears, apart from the poor buggers who lost their jobs. Meanwhile, doctors are being urged to ask people with mental health problems about their gambling habits. The draft health guidance is currently open for consultation. So, there you go. That's what's, what's going on. Um, yeah, I, I don't really know what to make of it, to be honest. I think it's, uh, you know, I think in, in principle, obviously, any money that has been taken away from the gambling companies and given to help support the people that are suffering with this addiction, I think is brilliant. But I think until we know the real details, we find out actually what those arbitrary percentages mean, where the money is going to go and how that money is going to be used. At the moment, it all feels a little bit like lip service to uh, an escalating problem so that both the government and the people um, also the businesses that are operating these sort of gambling companies and also the gambling commission themselves can be seen to be doing something um, you know but what that something turns out to be I think ultimately is going to be the uh, the proof in the pudding let me know what you think um, 
Thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay sane. As always, there'll be a Patreon link in the description below if you wish to support the channel, and I'll speak to you all soon. All the best.